Hello everyone, Matthew here. So this is just gonna be sort of a raw vlog about thoughts and life and feelings and such. Uh, so if that's not your thing and, or if you're not into a lot of rambling, um, this might not be the video for you, but I hope uh, some of you get some um, enjoyment out of this and maybe some advice. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about stuff. Um, and this specifically, I've wanted to talk about this subject for a while, but I don't really know how to bring it up within the context of my videos because if I did it within a coffee talk, I don't feel like um, it gives it as much attention as it deserves. Um, and I don't want to drag this on too long and like build it up because it's not like this huge, huge thing. But I sort of wanted to talk to you guys about the days where you're just like not feeling it. Like the days when you wake up and you're like, yeah, I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather be back asleep. I'd rather hit that snooze button. Um, but, uh, you know, you have to get up. Uh, because some days, like, even I have those days where I'm just not feeling it. And, you know, in general, I'm a happy person. I'm a happy guy. Uh, I love life, and life is beautiful in so many ways. And my eyes have been open to that over this past year. And it's just the most amazing thing to just see the world and to see the love in life and the beauty of everything. But some days, even though I'm surrounded by the beauty, I'm just not feeling it. Like, I just don't even want to get out of bed. And so I sort of wanted to address my thoughts around that idea because it's an idea that everyone has. You know, it's a, it's a feeling that everyone has that, like, they don't want to get up and do the day even though... Um, they love life. Even though there's nothing particularly wrong, they just have a f sense or a feeling that you're more tired or more fatigued or you just like, you just don't want to get up and start your day. Um, and you know, I struggle with this um, a decent amount. I, I don't know if struggle is the right word, but I'll have a lot of mornings where I'm just not feeling it, where I, like, I'm surrounded by the beauty, like I said, but I just don't want to see it. And I, it's, I don't know, that's such a weird thing. Like, Oh, look, everything's so beautiful. Oh, I don't want to see it. I don't care about anything. I just want to sleep. Like, it's such a weird thing, but, you know, everyone has it. And I was listening to a podcast. Uh, it's called You Made It Weird uh, with Pete Holmes. That's a great podcast, by the way. If you're into comedy, um, spirituality, uh, it's, it's, really, it's a really good podcast. I'd highly recommend it. Um, but I think this idea came up of consciousness uh, while commuting. So there's commuter's consciousness. Um, and then there's the commuter's consciousness, and then there's crew's consciousness. So this is like on your, um, what do you call it? Your route to work, your, you know, <laughs> what's, what's that period called when you're on your way to work? Your com commute? Yeah, it's your commute. I just said commuter's consciousness. How did I not link the two? I don't know. But, <laughs> so there's commuter's consciousness, and that's basically when you're so concerned about getting to your destination that you're selfish, you don't care about anything else around you, to your own detriment. So like it's hindering your own attitude, uh, it's hindering how you're handling situations. Uh, you're just so focused on getting to your destination that you just don't care. And then there's the cruise consciousness, which is enjoying uh, the commute and taking in the beauty because either way, you're gonna be going through this 15 minute commute, 30 minute commute, two hour commute, however long your commute is. Either way, you're gonna be doing this. Um, and you know, it's really not beneficial in any way to do the um, commuter's consciousness and just like tunnel vision, head down and ignore everything and like get in other people's way. You know, that's not really beneficial. Uh, it's more obviously beneficial just to see the beauty in the cruise. So I was thinking of how I can make, I guess, my commutes better um, because sometimes I'll wake up and I'll get in my car and I'll go to work in the morning. I'm just not feeling it, having a bad day. Uh, get to work, clock in, still having a bad day, bad attitude, and that doesn't help anyone. Uh, we all have those days, but it's just sort of trying to learn out, learn how to like combat, I guess, those days and to make the best of those days um, because that's, that's all we can do, just make the best. You're going to have those days, but it's just, I guess, the point I wanted to make with this is that it's a part of life. It's a part of life to have struggles to have suffering to have bad times because in the big scheme of things suffering really helps you grow as a person um i know with me personally anorexia like it's one of those things where 
you look back and it was a horrible thing. Like anorexia is not good in any way. Don't recommend it. Don't do it. Anorexia is bad. I went through it. But now that I'm on the other side, I don't know if I would be who I am today without the anorexia. If you took the anorexia away, I don't know who I would be. Um, and so suffering, I feel, has its place in this life. Um, and I know that's a, that's a hard concept to grasp because we don't like the fact that there is suffering in the world. And that's a whole other debate. I don't know if I'll make a separate video on that. I don't even know if I want to get into that. Uh, but su suffering is a part of the world. Everyone suffers. We can all agree on that. And it's just, there's, there's a certain what, beauty in admiring the suffering in your life and accepting it and like seeing it as part of the whole thing. Because like when you look back, the suffering's gonna turn into something great. Uh, you might not know what it's gonna turn into, but I feel like suffering's there for a reason. And if you can just grasp that, oh, you're in the part of life where suffering happens, but it's not permanent, it's not forever, you're eventually going to be in a place where you're gonna be loving life, everything's going great, where like for me, I got cast on a TV show, I was on Cloud9. Um, but then, like, even the good stuff also fades. The bad stuff passes with time. Good stuff passes with time. It's all a part of life, right? And so suffering's a part of life. Good times are a part of life. And I feel like it's a big step to start admiring the time that we're in instead of trying to blow past it, instead of trying to reach our destinations with commuter's consciousness. I feel like we should just enjoy where we are in life now, do what we can now, and you know, it's the same thing with dreams. A lot of people talk about what they want to do and they can talk about it all day. They can have ideas all day, but they're not going to get any closer to it unless they actually put those, put actions towards those ideas and dreams. Um, and so utilizing the moment we have now to create actions to accomplish those dreams, that's what we need to be doing. We don't need to be worrying because worrying doesn't help anything. And I know it's hard because like I worry a ton very anxious, all these things I struggle with as well. But over this past year I've grown and I feel like I've gotten to a place where I can more so accept and appreciate the point of life that I'm in. Because I, like this is not my end goal, obviously. I want to move to Los Angeles. I want to have, uh, I guess, a bigger growth on YouTube. I want to be on more TV shows. I want to do a bunch of things in my life. I want to make a difference. But Right now, I need to focus on the difference I'm making right here with this video camera, with this video on YouTube. I need to focus on the audience I have now. I need to focus on the now and not worry about the future. Um, even admits the suffering, and I need to know that suffering is a part of this and that overall it's gonna make me a better person. So I just wanna encourage anyone, if you're struggling or if you've been feeling down even like this past year or so or even for a while, just know that there's always hope. Uh, suffering's a part of life. Everyone suffers. You're not alone. I promise you, you're not alone. Everyone, there's so many people out there, I'm sure. The internet's a vast, vast black hole. I'm sure you could find people to help you relate to. If you ever want to talk to me, I'm always open to. You can Snapchat me or whatever. But you're not alone, and it might feel like you're alone, but there were so many points in my life where I felt so alone. I felt lost, and seeing how far I've gone now and where my life has taken me, it's just, life is beautiful, even with the suffering. And it's such a weird thing to say, um, but life is beautiful. And I feel like we forget that a lot. We autopilot through our days. We commuters consciousness through our commutes. We just blow through the day and we, like, we hope, we look forward to things in the future instead of appreciating the present, like mindfulness and stuff. Um, but yeah, so I just want to encourage you guys to appreciate the present, appreciate the moment now, breathe, feel, just feel that breath, like just that, the feeling of that breath coming in and out, like we don't even take the time to acknowledge that, like that's such a beautiful and amazing feeling, just the fact that we can breathe, like that's amazing, just breathe in the air of life and love it, because life's crazy, and I actually have this um, notebook here. And every morning I sort of have a quiet time and I study um, about life, I guess. Uh, there's a bunch of books I could recommend. There's a book called Becoming Wise by Krista Tippett. Uh, and she does a podcast called On Being, which is an amazing podcast, which has helped grow my 
ideas of life and stuff all over the place. If you want to check out the podcast On Being, would highly recommend it. But I wrote down some quotes um, from uh, Krista Tippett's book, um, Becoming Wise. And I think, and I wanted to share one of these right now. So I'm going to I'm flipping to the page. Here we go. I saw this, I forget, it was early on in the book, but uh, it's just a small little passage. It says, Learn how to give voice to those raw, essential, heartbreaking, and life-giving places in us so, so that we may know them more consciously, live what they teach us, and mine their wisdom for our life together. Isn't that beautiful? Hold on, let me read that one more time because I stumbled a little. Learn how to give voice to those raw, essential, heartbreaking, and life-giving places in us so that we may know them more consciously, live what they teach us, and mine their wisdom for our life together. That's so beautiful. And I feel like a lot of that, it's like talking about giving voice to these raw, essential, heartbreaking, and life-giving places. And I feel like those are all adjectives to describe suffering. Suffering is raw, but it's essential, it's heartbreaking, and it's life-giving because it teaches us so many things. We learn so many th things through suffering. Uh, there's a quote from by Richard Rohr, it's like failure, darkness, um, I don't, there's a lot of adjectives, but just failure is like our greatest teacher. It's not degrees, it's not doctrines, it's failure and trying again, and ambition and passion and just doing things over and over and failing and starting over. That's our biggest teacher in life. It's not, it's not learning in a classroom, although that is a form of learning, but I, I feel like the greatest things, you're, the way you learn the most out of life, I feel, is through suffering and through failure. I have learned so much through my life through failing, and I'm just gonna keep failing and keep learning and keep pushing, and I'm gonna just keep trying to appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, that's such a beautiful passage. I'll read it one more time just because I love it so much. Um, it's by Krista Tippett uh, from her book, Becoming Wise. She says, Learn how to give voice to those raw, essential, heartbreaking, and life-giving places in us so that we may know them more consciously so we can be aware of when we're suffering, live what they teach us while we're going through the suffering, live, live it out and see what we're learning, see what it's teaching us, and mine the wisdom that we learn from it for our life together. We need to work together with the suffering. We don't need to be set apart. We are together, we are one, we're all one. I feel like we're all one big family on this earth. And I, I love it, I love you all. Anyone watching this, thank you. I just wanna encourage you today. Um, so go live your best life appreciate the moment the moments we have now um, know that the suffering will pass and that the suffering is a essential part of life and that great things can come from it because I know great things have come from my struggles um, and it's just crazy to look back on so thank you again so much for watching this I'm sorry if I rambled a ton and it took me a while to get to the point I feel like in this video, but I was all over the place. I had a bunch of points I wanted to make, and I should probably write these things down beforehand, but I love you all. I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day because you're an amazing person, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.